Hi, my name is Jason Stevens, and I'm 25 from Melbourne, Australia. I'm an action sports photographer shooting mountain bikes and I shoot the national series here in Australia and also travel worldwide shooting the World Cups. Today I'm going to talk to you about the gear that I use and the equipment that I use and how I go about making a picture that, that you might see on the web or in a magazine. Uh, I predominantly shoot with a Canon 1DX. Uh, I like it because it's got a high burst rate which lets me capture the image and it's also got a high dynamic range and its low light performance is outstanding. Uh, I also use a, a Canon 7200 2.8 uh, it's got the best range and the best reach for mountain biking. It keeps you out of the action, but also puts you right in the action. I also shoot with a Sigma 15mm fisheye. I like that because it gives you a broader range, and I actually like the way that it, it changes the image and distorts it around the edges. It, it gives you a much more interesting feel. Uh, I also use the Canon 51.2 to shoot bike reviews and also riders off their bikes. It's great for portrait work and also separates what you're trying to shoot versus the background or, or other things that might confuse people. Uh, today we're going to talk about some of the gear that I use and uh, how I get it around the world. Uh, I use my f-stop bag predominantly due to its size. Uh, it carries my 300 and all my gear in it without any excessive or extra bags. Uh, all my flashes, I carry four flashes predominantly and six triggers just in case there's an issue and it all fits in the bag. Um, it also carries all three bodies that I use, along with all the lenses. It's also fairly waterproof, which protects it even when you're in bad weather. It's also a good size for travel. Uh, it fits in an international aircraft easily with carry-on. It fits on the overhead locker without any real issue. It's almost designed for it, though F-Stop don't recommend it. The, one of the advantages I find with the F-Stop bag is even when it's muddy or dusty, everything fits in from the back. Uh, so the rear loading compartment makes it super easy to get any gear out. Uh, I'll try and show you what's in here. Uh, inside my f-stop bag, everything's packed in super neatly. I have my 300 at the top, two extenders here, one for the Sigma, one for the Canon. I also carry both bodies here, a 7D and a 350D infrared. I also carry a 2470 up here, along with my 1635, my 50F 1.2 and also my Sigma 2.8 fisheye. Also, I carry my 1DX body in here, connected to my 7200. I find that the easiest way to move things, as the 300 has a huge front element, which I can't fit into the bag neatly with everything else connected. Uh, this is the 1DX that I shoot with, and this is my 7200 lens, which is on there 70 to 80% of the time. I swap it off for the fisheye uh, regularly at races, but that's, they're about the two lenses that I generally use. Uh, when I shoot with the 1DX, I always shoot in manual. I'm not really a fan of the aperture priority, or the shutter priority. But with Canon's new firmware update for the 1DX, it makes it much easier because even if you set the ISO and anything else to auto, uh, the ISO is more responsive to the light around it. Um, but personally, I shoot in manual and I always try to underexpose the shot about a quarter of a stop because when it comes to post processing, I find it easier to bring the shadows out than to try and recover the highlights. Uh, when it comes to lenses, I like getting the depth of field generally, so I shoot as wide open as I possibly can. I find with the 7200 2.8 is sharp when it's wide open, same with the 300 on the Sigma. When it's wide open it's, it's still really sharp, but I found with my 2470 I have to shoot it about, about f4 for it to become sharp, otherwise it's a little bit soft. Uh, the fish eye is a whole other story. Because 2.8 can, can reduce the depth of field to, to nearly nothing, sometimes it's better to shoot up around f10. Uh, in terms of shutter speed, it's all about the shot that you're going for. For pans, I try and drop the shutter speed down to somewhere around 1 60th, 1 50th, which obviously means the f-stop has to go much higher, up around f20. Uh, but for the action shots, I find that uh, around 1 in 2000, 1 in 2500 is an optimal shutter speed for, for the bikes that I'm shooting. Uh, another reason that the 1DX and the Canon L-Series lenses are a prime choice for me is, is their, their durability due to the weather. Uh, when you're shooting a World Cup, even though you might have a camera cover or something, the weather comes in and goes like no tomorrow. Uh, for example, last year in Leo Gang it snowed. Uh, at Val d'Isere a couple of years ago, it was rain, rain, sun, rain, sun, all day. Uh, and the camera cops are beating. The 1DX has a renowned history for being completely weather sealed and the new 1DX is, is absolutely no different. It's completely weather sealed and absolutely durable. Uh, we sat in the rain in Cairns for over, over a day in tropical rain. We probably got 100 mil of rain that day. 
and the 1DX copped a fair beating, but nothing to stop it completely. A couple of buttons stopped, but the ability to shoot continued. Uh, the 7200, along with all L-series lenses, carries the weather seal at the bottom, which connects uh, to the camera properly and allows the, the weather to not get in. It's not waterproof, it's just water sealed. Um, it's worked excellently in the past for me, uh, not only for bikes, but also doing other things. But when it comes to shooting with flashes, I like to shoot with my cameras, my flashes off the camera usually. I'm not really an on-camera flash person, though sometimes it has, it, has its place. Uh, on the contrary, I don't shoot with Canon flashes because I find they're exclusively expensive uh, for the rating of damage that might happen to the, to the flashes when shooting off camera. I don't think it's worth the risk. I use Yung Nuo flashes and also triggers from Hong Kong. They're about a quarter of the price of Canon ones and they're also ETTL and high speed SIG ready. Uh, when it comes to using the flashes, I tend to use two flashes to light the rider and one to do a background fill. If the weather's changing, like in a rainforest where there's storms coming over, I usually shoot ETTL because the flashes can take into account everything though I might set the rider bank to be slightly brighter than the bank of flashes to do the background fill. When the light's constant, I prefer to shoot in manual mode because I can control the flashes as riders come past. Some riders ride in a different position or align to other riders, which allows me to change the flash quickly so I can manually set it to be a bit brighter when the rider takes a low line or a little bit duller when it, they take the high line. That's it for today. I hope that you've uh, learned something new or perhaps something that you weren't sure about has now been cleared up. Uh, for the rest of the season, I'll be shooting for downhill 24-7 and also a few magazines such as Revo. So keep an eye out for my work in those. And also check out my site. It's got some shots from the past and it's also a good way to keep in contact with me. If you have any further questions or you'd like to have a chat, I have a contact form on my site and I also have an email that you can contact me through. The site is jasonstevesimagery.com. You can also contact me through my Facebook. You just have to search for Jason Stevens Photography. If you're out and about around the world at World Cups or hanging out at some of the state races here in Victoria or even the national ones, come and say hey, I'm always happy to have a chat and have a bit of a talk.